Welcome back to the Sean Trey Show. I've got an awesome guest with me today. Now, would you like to tell people who you are and uh, and tell people a little bit about yourself? Of course. Well, it's good to be back, everybody. Yeah. I am Roberta Lee. <laughs> A return I'm guest, a, which is awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, I am a former teacher turned um, artist, taking a dive into music industry for the very first time, and songwriter, producer, all those many different hats, and mom and wife and all those good things. And so I am working on um, my next project, and that's what brings us here right now. Then t- tell me about this because I, I had I had seen you posting about your your upcoming project album and I, I I'm I'm super supportive I love your music um, and I, I wanted to find out more about what is what is the the essence of this new project all about I feel like for it to be for it being my first full length record I feel like it's more of an introduction to who I am um, just a taste the EP was exactly what it was meant to be. It was just a little smidget, a little taste of who Roberta Lee is. And I feel like this is more of a full on introduction, a full on like chapter one, like this is who you're dealing with as far as an artist and a person. And so it's entitled too much of a woman. Okay. And nice. um, I have nice. found, <laughs> I have found um, that I have been too much of a woman for some people and just enough for the right folks in the right community. And, and the people who love me. And so I wanted to express that in this first record, in this first project. So that that is an interesting concept. I, I like that. And I want to I want to deep dive into that a little bit. Too much of a woman. It, it, I remember when I was a kid, I'm, I wasn't too much of a woman, but the I concept of too much <laughs> that people people mm. want us to tone it back, to dial it back. And there are there's yeah. this whole group of people that are made uncomfortable when some of us shine, you know, and, and I think exactly. that, you know, the people when they shine exactly. scare some people. So t- tell me about that for yeah. yourself. Do Absolutely. you have any experience? Well, Shana, yeah, I, I think you hit it. I think you hit the nail on the head, honestly. Um, whether it's too much of a woman or too much of a man or too much of anybody that I identify yeah. as in any rate, too black, too white, too this, too that, like there's always some yeah. sort of, um, you know, box that, that people get placed in, um, to keep people in this particular expectation of how we should behave, how we should love, how we should, you know, um, how we should make money, um, how we should, (laughs) um, live and survive instead of us walking in freedom of just being who we are unapologetically. If you want to make an income doing music or being a creative, or if you want to make an income doing nine to five, it's your choice, right? It, it's, it's, it's leaving space. It's the conversation about leaving space for people to simply be without being restricted. I like that. And then, see, then that's one of the things that there was this, um, this figure skater. I can't remember what, it, who, who it was or how it played out. But this, there was this, this move in the figure skating world. I don't know a ton about figure skating, but it was just, I remember this story about this person was able to pull off. I think it was like some type of backflip and it was banned. It was banned because it was, it was just too dangerous to this, to that. And yet this person was able to do it and yet was never allowed to do it in competition because they considered it to be something that wasn't, you know, what they wanted to promote. And, but yet there was this history of in figure skating, there was always these moves that were seemed deemed too advanced. There was always this thing that was pushing the envelope. And yeah. that was for a period of time um, yeah. can, banned until it became the norm. And, and yeah. to me, I, I think that maybe we should start rethinking what is the norm and rethinking what is allowed, you know, because I, who, who's setting the, who's setting the rules? People who don't, right. want to give up the time, you know, <laughs> who do we ultimately have to answer to? We have to answer right. to ourselves at the end of the day, you yeah. know, um, we're, we're going to be, um, approaching the end of our lives, um, and saying, did I satisfy me? Am I proud of myself? Because the only person that that you're going to have that conversation with is, and I realize that that's kind of been um, 
you know, my um, realization when I decided to do music full time was, you know what, I don't, I'm not going to have anybody to answer to but me at the yeah. end of all this. And so am I, is Roberta at 80 going to be proud of Roberta at 35 for taking the risk and taking the chance? Or is she going to be upset with her for sticking to the status quo and um, not taking a risk on those dreams that I feel like at the end of the day, that's who we have to answer to. Yeah. And I, I think you're spot on. And it's like, there was a, there was one little post that I made on my Instagram and it says, uh, and it was essentially like make choices that your eight years old self and your 80 year old self would be proud of, you know, yeah. make decisions and, and go in that direction. Yeah. Now, now what, what was it that kicked off your desire to make this album? What was it that was that kind of, got your creative, your, your creative energy flowing? Um, well, I, I wrote the song too much of a woman at the beginning of this year. Um, and it just, it was just a, a really number one, the way it was received was out of this world. Like every time I performed it, every time that line would drop and say, you know, if I'm too much of a woman, you're too little of a man. And the way people would respond, it was just like mic drop, you know, it was just such a great, response to that. And so it, it told me that this was a conversation that needed to be had. And, um, I wrote that song out of experiences. I was on a radio show the other day and I said, for the record, it's not about my husband. (laughs) (laughs) This song is not about my husband. It's just more about the experiences I've had in certain systems and certain places where I was expected to be in this box, to stick to this pattern, to stick to this expectation. And I was not allowed to be me. As a matter of fact, being me sometimes was threatening for some people, you know. So um, after seeing how it was received and then um, just kind of mulling over like these experiences, I decided to I decided that that would be a great um, story to tell. That was the story that I wanted to tell my first full length album. So that's an awesome thing. And and you have kids as well. Do you have do you have sons, daughters? I have a little girl and a little boy. Yes. That's awesome. I have, they hey, call you... it the rich man's family. <laughs> <laughs> have I, you heard I of haven't... that? I had never heard of that. No, I haven't actually. I was, I was <laughs> going to move on to something else, but I was like, hang on. What is the rich man's family? Uh, someone said that to my husband one time we were walking. They're like, yeah, you got the rich man's family. You got your little girl, you got your little boy. And <laughs> I'm like, That's okay, awesome. I've never heard that. But, but yeah, I have, you know, my daughter, Vanessa, she's eight, you know, my son, Michael is six. And, um, you know, I, we both have a responsibility to set an example for them as far as yep. their freedom to be themselves, you know? So I, 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 I never understood that. But, you know, being the father of a daughter, it, it woke me up and, and <laughs> uh, forgive me for this, but one of my favorite, I love Dirty Dancing and I love mm-hmm. that line. I love that That's line. Funny. Nobody puts baby in a corner, you know, yeah. and, and, and every time, every time I think about my daughter, I'm just like, I hope no one ever puts my kid in the corner yeah. and, yeah. and, and I can't. Hope for Patrick Swayze, who was literally the most genuinely awesome, sweet, wonderful person in real life. We met him. I met him a couple times when I was a kid. Nice, um, nice. And he's such a genuine. You can't wait for someone to come rescue someone. You got to teach people to stand up for themselves. You know, Absolutely. and Absolutely. and so I, I, I'm 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 very impressed by this this topic. Now, with your album. Are you writing everything yourself? Are you doing all the instrumentation? What What is your goal with this? Are you collaborating with different people? I'd love to know more about your process. Yeah. Um, so the catalog that I have in mind right now, I wrote all the songs myself. Um, definitely like pri- primarily songwriter first. Um, yeah. So they're all written. The demos are done. And uh, my goal this time, which is why I am start, I did the Kickstarter, is to work with a producer. The last um, project I did, Just a Taste, was a DIY project. I did yeah. it all here in my studio. I did it all at home. And, um, and I was encouraged to 
kind of level up when it comes to the quality and the presentation and what I had to offer when it came to music. And so that's why I said it's probably going to be, you know, it, it's important to work with a team this time. And it's a little bit of a, it's a little scary, you know what I mean? Because you're kind of relinquishing a little bit of creative control, but it's also going to help to um, step outside the box and expand myself. Um, but that's that's what the the Kickstarter is all about is yeah, I want to work with some producers. I would love to get features. I would love to have um, a higher quality of sound and presentation and marketing too. Um, and yeah. that, of course, takes money. So, so yes, yeah. I'm looking forward. I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is uh, features. I'm hoping to get some folks to to join me on a few songs. So that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and that's. I, I was talking to someone about that the other day about getting this collaborative. We live in an era that is dominated by social media and, and whether people like it or not, um, it is a landscape where if you can collaborate with people, it grows your sphere of influence. It grows. And and I, I, I don't just try like to think of it in those terms. I'm like, for me, it it grows your positivity. You know, it grows all of that goodness and all the good vibes that are people are sending your way. Yeah. You know? And so so I I love that. I love the idea of bringing people in like that. And, uh, yeah, Yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Now, um, what, what, what genre is, is are most of these songs in, is it mostly country? Is it Americana or or what what do you feel like you're drawing? What is your influence that you're drawn from for most of the songs that you wrote for this album? Um, someone, someone heard me, um, a friend of mine, we were working on, um, some music together. I believe it was a show. He was a musician and, um, his name, his stage name is chosen, chosen fingers. Um, and he, he said, man, you're like, (laughs) keyboard, um, pianist. And so he said, you, he described it as country neopop. I like that. And I'm like, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can see that. I'm like, I was so grateful that somebody finally pulled it together for me because I, I knew I had, I had a lot of jazz influences from my parents, you know, uh, growing up, we would listen to jazz and the old school R and B and and the gospel and things like that. But then as I picked up guitar and as a storyteller, like it just, I just felt at home with country music. And so that term just perfectly blended all, all of all of those feelings and sentiments and and sounds that kind of naturally came out where it it leans towards like these jazzy influences um definitely some pop records because i like attention grabbing i like um you know having something that you, people can sing along with and and move to but then there, when it comes to the storytelling, there are a lot of songs where it sounds like you're listening to a movie and it is heavily in, in the country realm, the country folk realm. So um, I'm excited to have that range of genre and conversation in in the album. But country neopop sums it up just about. <laughs> just about That's right. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, when I remember last time when we had talked about... about um, the idea of kind of working beyond labels, you know, like not like record labels, but like beyond musical labels, you know, and be in mixing genres and kind of creating things that were mm-hmm. new and fun, you know, and, and right now is this golden age of, of these collaborative, you know, um, uh, musical endeavors that are kind of outside of the box, which is freaking awesome, you know, and, and it's, it's beautiful like that. Now, what yeah. what do you need to get this album made? What do you need from people to help you make this album? Um, well, right now, uh, the Kickstarter, right? And, yeah. and donations, um, people pledging um, to this Kickstarter. Because a lot of times as artists, we hesitate to move forward because we really just don't have the funding, the support to do it. Um, yeah. And that's been a major lesson for me. Um, this year is that I could put all the blood, sweat and tears into making a record. But if I don't have the, the resources to back it and to actually push it out there and get people to listen, um, it's kind of just like, Hey, it just falls into the sea of, (laughs) 
<laughs> this huge right. sea of 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 music that that we have right now. Um, and so right now it's getting, we have four days left, um, and it's getting the funding and then it's like, okay, once you have the funding, you're like, now I know I can move forward because it's like, okay, you reach out to, to producers, you reach out to, um, creative directors, you reach out to all these people and you make all these contacts, but you're like, ah don't know if I can afford you just yet. So, (laughs) so it's like just make, making that mark when it comes to the funding. And then after that, it's like, okay, now I can make the connections. I can make the network because I know I'll be able to meet them where they need, because they have to get paid too. like everybody. And it's, that's kind of the tough part about being an artist and a songwriter is that everybody gets paid before you do. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things, but, um, that's, that's the way the beast runs right now. And so that is priority is, is getting this Kickstarter completely funded. And then after that, I'm, I can move forward with security and say, okay, cause the songs are there. The songs are done. Yeah, <laughs> I, the, That's not the issue, you know, at all, you know, the songs are there and they're ready to be recorded, but yeah. You got to have the money. You yeah. got to have it. <laughs> but, you know, and that's the beauty of of things like Kickstarter. And I, I think there's some other different uh, crowdfunding platforms. But yet, it allows people to see, you know, I, I think back. And you hear stories about great, I think about like Elvis Presley or Johnny Cash or these people who had... That, that had these chance encounters on thousands of others that were successful that had these chance encounters that led to them getting signed, getting their music out there. But there was a host of other people who did not have that opportunity, who might've been the greatest musician in the world, might've had the most amazing music. But at that time there wasn't, you know, these Kickstarter, there wasn't social media where people could create campaigns and, and pull something together. And yeah. so that's what I find is really beautiful. And for anyone who's watching right now, um, we will have a link on the YouTube description. Hopefully we'll have some other links up. Now, how can people find you and find your information? So if they want to develop, uh, to, to, um, if they want to develop, if they want to uh, donate, how, how can people find you? Of course. You? Yeah. Um, well, you know, my website, Lee, spelled L-E-A. Um, dot com and then there's of course um on all the socials facebook twitter um instagram and you will definitely find truckloads of <laughs> posts and tweets and links and <laughs> it's not gonna be hard to find us for sure <laughs> awesome. when you look me up so um that's exactly where they can find me no no well there was this great this great um quote post kind of a little thing there was this Korean show that my wife showed me the other day. And I think they took, I don't know where they took the inspiration from. But I, I remember also in the, in the movie uh, Cash uh, with Joaquin Phoenix. And uh, what, was, what was her name? Uh, I'm blanking on the actress that plays June Carter Cash. Um, not a problem, but uh, the, 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 the main actor... Or, or not the main actor, the guy who plays the, the record label exec is talking to Johnny Cash. And Johnny Cash is auditioning and he's like to her, you know, playing some some song that wasn't so great. And he's like, if you were dying in a ditch somewhere and you had one song to play to God, to let God know exactly where you were at and your feelings, what would you play? What song would you play? Mm-hmm. And in this Korean TV show, they had the same kind of vibe. They had this... Um, one take is the name of it. It's on Netflix. Right. One take. Okay. Okay. And they, they, they essentially have these Korean artists get them on stage and they say, we, we, there's nothing fancy. You've got one take yeah. to perform a piece that you would love the, the universe to hear yeah. forever mm. and always. What would you mm. perform? Mm. So I'm asking you with your album, if you, if you were, you were singing one message, what would be that message that, you think people, the world needs to hear from your album? Hmm. So are you asking, let me, let me get clarity on the question. Are you asking which song delivers that message? 
or are you asking? What is the message? What is the message? That with okay, what album? is the message? Okay, so someone asked me the other day if I could describe the album in, when, in one word, what would it be? And I said complex. And so the message to the universe is that as a human being, for me, speaking for myself as a woman, I am a complex species. I am a complex person and complexity cannot be put in a, in, in a simple um, box. It cannot be put in a simple frame of mind. Um, yeah. The album or in a contains- short answer. <laughs> Say again? Or in a short answer. You know, it's something that's not able to... <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. The, 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 the songs range for, from something as spicy and as attitude driven as too much of a woman to something as fun and exciting as girl trip to something as simple and delightful as dinner sunset, Nina Simone. Like they, the, the range is completely different. Too much of a woman is definitely like boss girl, like you put your foot down. You can't tell me what to do. And I will push my finger in your chest to back you, you back off. Like just that fierceness, that spiciness. Yeah. And then girl yeah. trip is just, <laughs> is the wild side that you probably don't want your mom or your kids seeing. You're going on a trip with your friends and it's all about having fun. And Dinner Sunset Nina Simone is... about enjoying a simple dinner with your family. Like I do love my husband and my kids. That is also true. And it is also true that I'm not going to back down on what I believe or what I want. And it is also true that I, (laughs) that there's a wild side of me that not everybody gets to see, but it's there. All of those things are true, you know? Um, And so that would be the message is that I love that it's complicated. (laughs) There was a, there was someone I was, someone was trying to give me advice recently on my, on my media, my podcasts, my social media, my, just the message that I'm creating my music. Mm -hmm. And they kept telling me, you need to specialize. You need to focus in on what you're trying to create. And I was like, if you're going to do music, do music. If you're going to do film, do film. If you're going to do, you know, like TikTok style videos, do that. If you're going to do a podcast, do that. And I was like, why can't I do everything? Why can't they're like, well, it's, it's going to be harder to be successful. And I was like, you're assuming that I am doing this to be famous. You are assuming that I am doing this to, um, get views. I'm doing this because this is what I love. This is what I'm passionate about. These are the stories I want to share, you know? And and I, and I think that that's the difference is like, are you doing something because it's what you love? And it, it represents all parts of the expression of you. Or are you doing it because yeah. you feel like it's going to be a benefit, you know, in the short term or something? I don't know. I, I, yeah. I just, I don't like those labels. I don't like those boxes. Man, that's powerful. That is powerful because I think everyone um, interprets behavior and the things that we do at like, it's like there has to be some sort of end goal. In goal. Yeah. There has to be some sort of linear, <clears throat> some sort of linear and like, boom, you made it to a p- specific point. And, and that's not always, that's not always life. You know what I mean? And it, it can't, it can be, I can do this just for my enjoyment. You know what I mean? I can, I can release this record to be someone's hype man, to be someone across the world where they need some encouragement and, and they're yeah. fighting for their rights. They're fighting for their lives. And I may not be able to change, you know, their circumstances or their government or their policy or anything like that, but I can be your hype man. And so I'm going to write this record and I'm going to send it across the world to hype somebody up <laughs> yeah. and encourage them to keep pushing forward. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, I don't have to be Beyonce. You know what I mean? I, I don't have to, I don't have, there doesn't have to be this pinnacle or this point, there are so many different layers and so many different ways that we can interpret success. Right. And for me, it, it, make a and, record. And maybe Beyonce, you know, from what I've heard about Beyonce, Beyonce didn't want to necessarily, people were always trying to put her in a box too. And, yeah. you know, in her newer albums, she stepped out of it. You know, she did Absolutely. what she wanted. Not because yeah. it was the music that she was told to make, but because 
this is what she was wanting to make. And yeah. it was Beyonce Absolutely. at that moment. You know, not the old Beyonce. At that not moment. the Beyonce at this time. Absolutely. It's, uh, Absolutely. I like that. The, it's it's all about the art. She she is she yeah. is just enjoying herself. Whether or not Radio exactly. wants to play it or not, she's yeah. like, I have fun making this. And that's, well, and that's it, the and beauty that's of, of streaming. And I, I think the beauty of the new musical landscape is that um, radio stations are losing some of their power. I mean, certainly they still have influence. Certainly they are still gatekeepers to certain, you know, things. However, people can find your music as long as you put it up. Yeah. But it, you got to you got to create it. You got to make it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's where, and that's the power with that's, and that's that's what the power of a of of crowdfunding like Kickstarter is because yeah. it gives the artists the freedom to simply be themselves, like unapologetically, like they don't have to um, mold or compromise their art and their craft to fit the label who's funding them right? Or yeah. the radio stations that you have to pay to play, right? You have to yeah, pay them yeah. in order to, for them to, to run your record. Sometimes um, the, the Kickstarter grants this freedom. It says, do you, if you trust me with my art, I'm going to, I'm going to do it from my heart. I'm going to do it from, um, from a genuine space, a genuine place. Um, and not, you know, tap dance and, 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 and just put out something that I think, um, the labels or the radio or whoever is going to like when, when people genuinely fund, um, like this project, the Kickstarter, I can come from a genuine place of artistry and not have to worry about, um, contorting, uh, my, my musical, um, likes and um preferences my musical style i don't have to worry about doing that for any other approval like when you back this project you are like i, I trust you i trust roberta lee she's gonna i know she's gonna come with something that is that is is gonna is speak to me and not not i don't have to do these these tricks and and backflips for labels and things like that like that's the freedom that comes with that well, see, and that's beautiful because I think so many people forget that, um, especially now, we're entering into a new age where people are really have this mindset that unless you're getting this certain number of views and says, unless you're getting a certain number of clicks and likes and this and that, that you're you're not successful. But I like to tell people that I like this concept. Um Sometimes you put things out there. One of my favorite movies is The Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski okay. got put out in the world and it flopped. It was a horrible flop. And, and you know, by the Hollywood standards, it was just this, this waste of a movie. But The Big Lebowski mm -hmm. was this movie that kept working. And it kind of created this cult following. And people kind of got into it. And no one saw it. So many, few people saw it in the theater. But over time, more and more people started watching it in different settings. They were at home and rentals at that time. And now through streaming and other things. And it became this huge success. And, and yeah. it was, why didn't it do well in the beginning? Well, because the system didn't get it. The system didn't promote it. There wasn't the, the whole support of it. Because people, again, it was like the backflip. It was operating outside of the box. And when you have things that operate outside that box, um, in general, sometimes the, the knee-jerk reaction is fear. It's a lack of understanding. You know, hey, did you, have you seen Baz Luhrmann's Elvis yet? Have you seen the new Elvis movie? Uh, I, that is a priority. I have been so busy. And so I have good. Been dying. I, <laughs> so good. I heard. I heard. I heard. It, but it, it I looks have a at how. In there. You do? That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, yeah, Shannon, Shannon um, Saunders plays the uh, the preacher, and then Yola, she's not my friend just yet, but <laughs> I claim her. She's my friend. I love it. You know, she she plays Sister Rosetta Tharp. So 
That's awesome. That's awesome. It, yeah. It, and one of the things that was beautiful about that movie is that, first of all, the soundtrack is is second to none. And I, I'm a big Baz Luhrmann fan. I like, I, I love um, Moulin Rouge. I love his movies, you know. But the yeah. thing is, is this, this, this soundtrack was yeah. way beyond any. But, you know, you look at an artist like Elvis, you look at these these artists that were... Uh, spearheading a shift in the direction of music and they you know they were not understood you look at people from centuries past you look at when the violin came out when they first started creating the violin people were like this thing is an unholy abomination uh it should not be allowed to make music (laughs) like everything people just don't get it And, and i think that we have to we owe it to ourselves to to create what we love, even if mm. people don't get it. Because yeah. someone will get it. It will yeah. touch the life of someone. It will touch the heart of someone. You yeah. just have to create it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's an interesting dynamic, the way um creativity and the arts um flow into business. Cause even when you think even when you think about Elvis, for example, yeah. The reason why he became successful is be, is because he was he took what was misunderstood in yeah. black and brown artists and he was a package that they could put it in and sell. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're like, oh well, we can sell him to the popular American public yeah. because yeah. that's a, that's that's a little bit more palatable. Um yeah. and so yeah. Um, I haven't seen the movie, but just trying to understand just, you know, what you hear they, about they, Elvis, that there was a genuine that. appreciation yeah. for yep. artists that he learned from. Um, yep. But it, it at the time, it could not translate into because it was all about business. There's just this this fine dance between craft and artistry and just your yep. genuine love for art and then business. It's like once yep. business gets a hold of it, it just... Huh. Cause he, he, you know, he was, he was taken advantage of as an artist too. You know, there were so that many, was, that's, 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 that's the whole plot. Movie I'm not going to give away yeah. everything. But yeah. that's, that's the, that's, right, that's right. the plot of the movie. <laughs> that's the plot right. of the movie. They, they yeah. look at how he was exploited and the music yeah. was exploited. There was just this yeah. constant exploitation yeah. Yeah. of, of everything. And it, it's yeah. interesting because you, you talk about that, but yet artists have the responsibility to mm-hmm. try to create art and try yeah. to push boundaries because Absolutely. if they don't, yeah, we get stuck in the same merry-go-round of, yeah. of mediocrity. Yeah. Yeah. The same cycle. It kind of just goes. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's kind of the catch 22. Um, but yeah. again, that's where grassroots grassroots support yes. challenges yep. that completely. Well, like you, you know, and and also being outside of the of the machine, it's it's interesting because one of the areas that I I get cracked up by is by um, boy bands and girl <laughs> bands, and whether it be like uh, in, in in Korea, and I got to be careful because I could get destroyed by the K-pop uh, <laughs> uh, fans for 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 any hate directed at any. But one of the things that I I was looking at was like I, I was cracking up. I like my daughter. My daughter knows BTS because her tutor loves BTS. And I was like in a BTS, and then I was like, "Hang on, isn't this that band from a couple years ago?" Oh no, no, that was a different band. I was like, "Man, you know, there's such a similarity. People look the same, and I'm, it's not, you know." And then I thought always the same thing with my wife, and she was like, "She was, she's like." Because they got so many boy bands here that we didn't get in the U.S. They had Boyzone and, um, mm. oh, man, they had so many more. Michael Learns really? to Rock. And I was like, I've never heard of Michael Learns to Rock. But, like, wow. there were all of these boy bands that came through, through through Asia. And when you listen to the music, there is this similarity between song to song. And, and, it, was mm. a, and it was something that I love in, um, oh, what's that? Turning Red. Have you seen Turning Red? Yeah, <laughs> I love movie. how such a good movie, right? I love yes. how Phineas and and Billie Eilish totally understood. Like, oh okay, my gosh. what makes a hit boy band song like and like the, the cookie cutter kind of nature? But they did it so well, and that's what's always cracked me up because even in the box, yeah. 
if you can push the the limits and find ways to be creative, you know, it, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a I have a song that I anticipate being on the record called "Small Town Boy," and tell me about it's, this. It's 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 pretty much a parody <laughs> because I, love it. I was just I was. I was diving into the country music world. You know, I'm just trying to listen to who, you know, who they're playing, like who's who's who, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And um, I was listening to one particular record. I'm not going to say the name of the group or, or, or the artist, but I was looking to the record and song after song, it was just kind of the same setting, like. They're at a bar or they're drinking wine yeah. and they're falling in love or they're breaking up. Like just kind right? of like this, this rotating um uh of theme. Okay. And yeah. it was very difficult to make it through. I was just like, okay, <laughs> I can do was, it. I, can. I, I love country music. I love country music. Yeah. And there was a song I was listening to, and it was like, I'm hunting, I'm shooting, I'm drinking every day. And like I love it, but like I, I don't go hunting every day. I don't go shooting yeah. every day, you know? And so yeah. as much as the song's catchy, I'm like, I live in Saigon. I live in Southeast Asia. It's hot. It's humid. I ride a motorbike, but I'm like, you know, I love yeah. the cowboy type of vibe, so, you know? So, Well, in, in the song, uh, Small Town Boy, the chorus goes, I'll be making friends in Dublin um, in a castle by a stream. I'll be um, uh, putting my roots down in Yakushka where I'll learn some Japanese, like, I, I'm listening to these country songs that talk about falling in love, like in a bar or in this small yeah. town space. And I'm like, that's nowhere near my story. Like I met my husband right. in Cambodia, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, like you're saying, like, you're like, okay, I, I, I live in Asia. Like where, where, <laughs> where are the lines that pertain to these um, out of the box um, experiences that the rest of us have. And so that's where I created the parody of small town boy, where I was like, okay, I know you're in a bar somewhere, probably in a bar, yeah. you take your shots, you're going to take her home in your truck, all that stuff. And I'm like, but I, my story is over here and right. the other side of the world. Well, and that's where I want to, you know, because my wife and I are looking at moving back to Nashville. And I want to do, and I told her, I said, if we're getting back to Nashville, head back to Nashville, I want to do a full album, like a full blown country album, but like not, not talking about going to the bar and, you know, because that's not our experience. And I want to do something yeah. that's just different. Yeah. And I, I think that Absolutely. there's so much of a room for that. And you talked to me about this last time in, in our last interview about th- that sharing your experience as who you are mm-hmm. and just your you yeah in this country music genre. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be three chords in the truth. And so everyone's right? truth is different. So when you hear the same exact truth on, on country music radio, where it's just all, there's always a beer in somebody's hand. <laughs> right. There's always a truck. You know what I mean? And there's all yep. like, it's like, okay, well, is, is that really three chords in the truth? And that's, that's where the artistry challenges that narrative. I love that. I love that. Well, yeah. I'm excited to hear, hear more songs from your new album. And, and I'm excited to, to see if we can get some people to help contribute and, 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 and kick into this Kickstarter and get things going. I appreciate it so much. I'm really excited. No, for no. It. Is there any last message that you'd love to share with people about Tell me really quick, why should people donate? Why should they help? Um, this, this project is not only my story, but it's the story of so many other people. I feel like everyone can relate to being placed in, in constraints and ideologies of how people think they should think, act, love, behave, all of those things. I think everybody can relate to that. And so um, this record is um, a confrontation of that notion. And not only is it is it my personal story as a Black woman from Virginia, but it's also the story of, i.e., young girls fighting about how, whether or not they can wear their hair out in Iran right now. You know what I mean? I yeah. had a friend of mine... Um, leave a message she's in tears because she has family in iran and she doesn't know if they're going to come back all because of hair (laughs) but if if we don't nip these constraints no matter how small the constraints are 
right? No matter how small the ex expectations are, if we don't nip them in the bud while they're little and, and tiny yeah. and, you know, hey, well, I think you should be a stay at home mom, mind your business. You know what I mean? Like if we don't nip right. those in the bud now, then they, they're just going to grow and get bigger and get bigger and get bigger. And so this is not just a Roberta Lee story. It is a, a an everybody's story. At some point, somewhere across the world, everybody needs the strength and the encouragement and the fierceness to kick the door down and to step outside the box, to put their foot down, to go get rest and enjoy a girl trip when they want to, to appreciate yep. um, having a nice meal with their families and people who love them. Like everybody needs that. It's not just a Roberta Lee story. It's everybody's story. Uh -huh.